All right, here to do some more testing with the 18K PV. And we're gonna see how much can come out of, basically, of course, I'm only using one battery. And I've had people talk about that in the comments that you won't be able to get the full output. And I'm pretty sure that is right. It might be like 9,000 or something that you can get out of the inverter. But we're gonna uh, hook up a couple more panels, which I already did. So I hooked up a couple more panels over here on the side so I can get maybe like 3,000 watts coming in because I haven't had a chance to put the stuff on the roof and all that yet. We're gonna wait on that till we get a chance to do it. But right now we're gonna do some testing and, and show you some of the cool features that the 18K PV has. So as you can see right now, maybe I'll bring it up on the app. All right, basically right now I've got about 3000 watts coming in. And as you can see right now, the whole house is using about 4,500 watts. And all of that is coming from the solar or the battery. So I got about 1800 coming out of the battery but you can set this thing and i'm gonna go ahead and show you that basically got 2962 watts coming in using about 4500 watts on the house 1700 of that's coming out of the battery and basically you can go over to your settings and go over to your discharge and since right now it's just going back to the main panel and i'm not selling back to the grid and all that you know i got it set where it will uh, not export at all right now the discharge current right here is set to 130 amps and that is gonna be DC. So let's say your uh, voltage on your battery is 52 or something. So 52 times, what I say, 130 or something. That's 6,760 uh, watts, which is gonna be, of course, less than that 70 amp breaker rating that you got feeding back into your grid main panel that you're helping to run your loads over there. I still don't have the critical loads panel, any of the loads moved over to that yet because I don't have all the solar up and I don't want to put it on there until I know I can run the stuff for sure without having to try to uh, charge the battery back all the time if I don't have to. So we took the discharge uh, current limit up to 150 and then set it. And I should be able to see probably right here, set successfully. Then we'll go back over to the monitoring part of the app and we can see at 214, there's 2,962 watts still coming in. Let's go ahead and refresh that make sure that nothing has changed so it's still about the same thing going out so as you can see we got that 3000 watts coming in 1650 right now going to the load and 1295 to the batteries and what you can do if you don't want you know that much going you know to the load right now we can take the the discharge setting which you know it's not that high anyway but you know just to show you how it works you know we can take it down to like 25 amps if you want to and set it and see, set successfully. Then we'll go back to the app and we'll see what it does. So what it should do is slow down if that 1650 is over the, the amount. Let me go ahead and see, let's go ahead and calculate that real quick. Might have to do it even lower. 25, let's say times 52, that's 1300. If it's 52 volts on the battery, which is about right. And as you can see, it switched over. So got a couple hundred basically coming from the grid and the rest coming from the PV and the inverter because I set the amps down. So if you want to limit how many amps, so basically if you want to limit how many amps you got coming from your battery, because you only have one battery and one inverter and you know, you're know you not trying to overload the stuff, you can limit it to whatever you want to do, you know, based on your wire and your breaker size. So I got a 70 amp breaker, the wire is good for like 105 amps. So it's, you know, that wire is gonna be fine, but uh, I can limit that down and that way I'm never gonna go, go over my amps. I can set it to be maybe 8,000 or 7,000 or something like that. Especially, you know, while I don't have enough solar on it anyway, I only have these six panels above me. And then I, of course I did these three just to hook up to these six, just to give it a little more power, you know, until we get some more hooked up, just so I can do some testing. As you see, still got that 3,000 coming in for the solar and it's got 1,800. As you see, bam, it just changed over and it's only using 1,000 on the ha house and then immediately stopped coming from the grid and started going into the battery. So, you know, that is working like it's supposed to. Got 1,800. So as you can see, you got 1,891 going into the battery right now and another 1,054 going to the house, getting that going. So as you can see with this 18K, definitely some interesting stuff. Maybe what I'll try to do is set this thing back up higher and have them turn a dryer or something on so you can see it pulling some more power out. Cause I have seen it, you know, pull out seven or 8,000 or whatever I have it sit at. So let's go ahead and try that. All right, 238, I got it recording. As you can see, got a 2,988 solar coming in. I went and turned the dryer on 
So the house is using almost 7,000 watts now. And I got 525 discharging from the battery. I guess it's just trying to discharge, you know, based on what it sees coming in and the loads is going up and down. And you can probably set it where you can force the battery to discharge. And uh, we might do that just to see it uh, discharge some more. We'll force a discharge. We'll go up to eight kilowatts. All right, let's see. And let's see if that works with this setting, with the force discharge. Let's see if it switches over. Let's go ahead and update that. And as you can see, the load already went down back to 1473 because there wasn't nothing in the dryer. It's one of the smart dryers. It probably turned itself off. The day I'm trying to use a big load is their house won't do a big load. But anyway, what we're trying to get at is you can discharge that battery at whatever you want to discharge it at and the inverter. So if you want to output 8K, you can set it to do 8K with the one battery. If you want it to only do three kilowatts at a time and spread out the discharge throughout the day, you can do that as well. You can set the battery will stop discharging at a certain level, you know, that way you don't discharge it all the way. So if the power goes out, you still have some power for your critical loads panel. At least once I get all that set up, like I said, all this is just going back to the main panel right now because I don't have a solar panel hooked up. So as you can see right here, I got a bigger load coming out of the battery and an inverter. And just doing this discharge test after I left, so I just recorded it on my phone when they were using more power. So basically their house right now is using 11,000 and like 23 watts. And most of it is coming out of the, the solar panels and inverter. Got 2,630 coming out of the solar panels and 7,950 coming out of the battery. And that's just the one battery. Basically I got it regulated down so it's not gonna pull more than the BMS will allow. And you know, you don't want the thing, since you're only using one battery, we try to put out 12 or 16,000 watts or whatever the max is, you know, for the surge capacity for the inverter. So basically I just regulated it down, got almost 8,000 watts coming out. And I just want to show you guys that hey, 8,000 watts will come out of that one battery and you can set the discharge amps to whatever you want it to be. And it's not a problem. So having about 10,000 watts coming out of the inverter, just run off the one battery. Hey, I think that's pretty good but this inverter is pretty awesome. It has all kinds of features that the 6000 XP definitely doesn't have. You know, the 6000 XP probably has more features than even I realize. Maybe I just don't use all the stuff because I'm using it off grid, I'm not using any grid interactivity, no grid input going into it. But I would still recommend this inverter, the 18 kPV, especially if you're looking to sell back. I mean, we're not looking to sell back here, but you know, even with the off-grid kind of capabilities where this is feeding into the grid panel and you can do zero export, you know, to me, it's still very, very valuable, you know, as a tool, because you can have your, your critical loads panel, have one inverter, you know, and then if you don't have a massive system or massive battery bank, you can set it to wherever you want it to discharge at and be able to run some loads especially if you have more solar panels than you have batteries, you can run your loads during the day and save you some money. And then you can run your critical loads panel if the power ever goes out. So you have your main stuff on there. You can have your fridge, your lights, internet, stuff like that, that you want to power and have it working if the power goes out. And of course, for anybody that didn't know how we got this 18 kPV, did the upgrade program. I'll link that video up above. Basically you can trade in some of your older inverters and get this uh, 18K PV for $3,000 instead of its normal price of like 5,200 or whatever it is. You know, so you say, so you can save several thousand dollars if you trade in, you know, your EG4 like 6,000 EX or 6,500 EX or the grow watts, you know, that I have the 5,000 ES. That's what I traded in. And if you trade in the EG4 ones, you can also trade them in for the 6,000 XPs that I have at my house, of course, because of course, this is my parents' house here that I'm trying to hook, up, hook them up with solar. So if you're interested in any of that, of course, I'll leave a link down in the description. You go through that, answer a few questions, put your serial number in, and it'll tell you if you're eligible or not. Basically, if you bought the, your inverters in 2023 or, or you know before that, you're going to be good to go. And basically, I can't wait till I get all the solar over here hooked up. You know, I need help doing it. So the days I've had, somebody tried to come and help. So when we do get a chance to put it on there, I definitely think it's going to save them a lot of money over here because they'll really be pulling in some power. So we're going to try to make sure we can run all our loads during the day and then have a critical loads panel for emergencies. And remember, if you like this kind of video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and thanks for watching.